So, as you can see here, I'm running a Pentium D945 on 1.5 volts at 4.7 gigahertz. I've just started running Cinebench R15. Minus 25 degrees Celsius at the evaporator. When I first uh, ran the benchmark, it seemed to be okay, but the second time I ran it, when I went up to 4.7, it was getting to plus 5 degrees on the evaporator, but it seems to be holding minus 25 this time, and I thought that was very silly considering it was only on 1.5 volts when it was holding a Q6600 at 1.55 volts just fine which is a much more powerful CPU so yeah it seems to be holding at minus 25 now before the temperature was just going up and up and up at a pretty alarming rate to be honest but it seems to be working now I've definitely got the mounting uh, sorted out which is good. And I've got another two CPUs to test here. I'm actually binning these on phase because I've only got three of these. Uh, I got these from CEX for three pounds each. I've also, over here, got some other CPUs. I think one of them is a E5800, which is this one. Um, and I've got a Pentium 4, which I didn't order which is annoying, and then they sent me another oh, Pentium D925, which I did order, I did order a few of these, and then they've also sent me this, which is another Pentium 4, I think one of them's 3 gigahertz and the other's like really slow. Oh no, that's a 935, that's correct as well. So they've sent me two correct CPUs. And then they've sent me this. Now I didn't order any socket 478 CPUs at all. This is a Pentium 4, uh, 3 GHz with hyperthreading. I haven't even ordered any 3 GHz CPUs. So I have no idea how they've managed to do that. So, yeah, anyway, benching this at the minute, still at minus 25 degrees, it seems to be holding up okay now, 1.5 volts. So this is a Malaysian chip, I've got the other two that I've got a Costa Rican, and uh, on this chip here, I can't actually see the full batch number, uh, because someone's attacked it with a screwdriver, or sanded it a bit, I don't know. So, that one will be interesting. <laughs> anyway, I need to get this screwed down. I have got a bit of uh, PCB cover here to go over these terminals because they're actually live uh, going straight down to the mains down there. Wow, don't focus. Um, so, I do need to cover those up with this and I'm also going to get like a probably make like a little wooden box to go around this bit uh, as this has all the power connections uh, converting the voltage to whatever the actual compressor uses and to power this little board here which is the motherboard controlling board which I'm pretty much not using apart from for the screen so that's it for this update on the phase cooler might give you some updated scores, see what happens with these Pentium uh, D945 things, see if any are any good. So, the CPU is now at 4.9 GHz, just over. Uh, you can see I'm still running Cinebench R15, and the phase call is still managing to keep it at minus 25C. Uh, I've worked out that if I run the uh, benchmark twice, it tends to uh, not cool it properly on the second attempt, which is really weird. Even though it can hold it at minus 25 all the way through 
the benchmark, I think the controller like increases the temperature at the end of the benchmark, like it shuts off the compressor a bit almost because it's not under load anymore. So when you re-put it under load again, it doesn't have enough time to react and get back onto load. So it basically rises the temperature really fast and it overheats. But as you can see, it's a fair bit faster now. It's at 4.9 gigahertz. I'm hoping to get over 5 gigahertz on this chip on phase at 1.5 volts. Um, I did manage to get my um, 925. I've got a Pentium D925, which I got to just over 5 gigahertz. But I think that was on 1.55 volts, but that was on air cooling. So the cooler temperatures should actually help. And as you can see here, the temperature is actually starting to go up a bit. I was holding it for minus 25 for quite a while, but it has just hit minus 23, but it's not going any further, which is good, because it starts getting into problems when it gets sort of above <laughs> minus 15 degrees. So it starts to go up quite quickly does the temperature then and it's actually crashed which is a bit annoying so I'll need to slow it down a little bit oh well 4.85 gigahertz maybe will work so here you can see it's managed to bench at just under 4.9 4.882 gigahertz uh, it's managed to score 121 uh, points in Cinebench uh, the evaporator temperature got up to about minus 23 degrees. I'm just waiting for it to cool down uh, before I give it another run. There it is. And I'll update you if I get a higher score. Uh, this is still 1.5 volts as well. So it's not doing too badly.